I kind of got it working. I guess that's cool. Hey, what's happening, guys? So, you remember a couple days ago, we started out with our AD9833 Arduino uh, signal generator project. And we just had it basically go, and it was outputting a sine wave. And we could change it with the pot. And I told you I was going to add some buttons and an OLED. Well, we're doing it with one button, which is um, just the easiest way to do it. And there is the OLED. Let's see if I can zoom in on that so you guys can see it. Um, that's just the rolling shutter of the camera that makes it look like that. It's, it's perfectly uh, stable in, in real life. So you see it's saying we have a sine wave of uh, about 4700K. Uh, and if we look up here, you can see our sine wave of about 4700K. And if I click the button, let's see if I can get this all into the screen. There's the button. It now says triangle wave here. You see a triangle wave there. Square wave. Square wave. And we're back to sine wave. And of course we can change the frequency. Now we're up to about our 10K. And again that works fine throughout all of our waveform types. So, let's go take a look at the code as to how I made this work. Alright, so here is the improved code from version 1. This is now uh, version 1.5 with the OLED and the ability to switch between waveforms. So the first thing we need is the wire library, which we need to communicate with our OLED and the driver for the OLED and the OLED requires a reset pin. We also need the library for the 9833 and we need to tell it which pin we'll be using to communicate with it. Then we'll create an object for the 9833 called Gen and we'll create an object for the OLED called Display. Next we have some variables. Our rate which is for the frequency, pot which is the 0 to 1023 uh, analog reading of the potentiometer. Our button to change waveforms is on pin 8. Push button counter which checks how many times that we've done this. We press the button set to 0. Button state set to 0 which is high or low. And last button state so it remembers where it was also set to 0. Then we will uh, start up the signal generator with gen.begin and we'll apply an initial waveform to it which is a sine wave at our initial rate. Then we will turn the signal generator on. Next we'll set up our two buttons A0 for input, that's well, actually not two buttons, a potentiometer and a button and pin 8 is an input and it has the internal 10k pull up resistor so it's held high when you push the button it will go low. I always have my serials, comms for debugging then we will start the display up. One thing to bear in mind here, I'm using the um, Adafruit libraries. If you're using one of the uh, super cheap Chinese OLEDs, the Adafruit library is at uh, hex address 0x3 delta. You need to change it to 0x3 Charlie. We'll show it's in the display and we'll clear the display. Now that everything is set up, we can begin the actual logic of the program and the logic I admit is not so good. I am not a programmer. If you've got hints on how to do this better, oh by all means please put them down below and I'll implement them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read the uh, button whether or not it's been pressed into button state. Then we're going to read the potentiometer to determine our frequency. And our frequency is the rate which is a map of the potentiometer value which can be from 0 to 1023 and we're going to go from 1k to 10,000 or 10k. Then we're going to see if you press the button. So if the button state this means is different than the last button state and if it's high then we will count 
the or we will increment the button press by one print some stuff out so I can debug it and we'll wait a little bit and then we will remember our last button state which is the button state so we know if it's changed and then we're gonna say here if the button push counter is greater than two we need to reset it to zero yeah I know this is weird um I had it if it was greater than three we reset it to one but it doesn't work that way for some reason I need to use zero and two even though as you're going to see in a second my numbers are one through three this just prints out our uh, frequency and waveform type on the display nothing big there so we're going to use the switch case here based on button push counter case one is going to be a sine wave so it will send the sine wave out to register zero at our chosen rate case two will be the triangle wave and it will send the triangle wave out register zero at our chosen rate case three which it never seems to get to it just seems to bypass it is square wave so I just set a default so when it gets wiggly that it will go directly to square wave and then we will display what's in the OLED buffer which is this stuff up here again not a programmer but it works I'm just happy when it works so it's working and I'm happy with that like I said I'm not a programmer so if you know a better way to write that code please put it down below and we'll implement it because I think what we're going to do next is we are going to take this here and remember um, the uh, Uno is pin for pin the same as a Nano we're going to change this over to a Nano we're going to put this all into a PC board. You know, you can get a Nano for probably a buck fifty. You're looking at probably two bucks for one of these, so we're at what three fifty, eight dollars. So what's that about thirteen dollars, twelve dollars? Potentiometer, you know, a few cents. So you can have yourself a signal generator that's good up to twelve and a half megahertz for let's let's say under twenty dollars. Now, that's pretty cool, I think. If you think, let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching and uh, your encouragement and support. That's why we're moving along with this project. Everybody said they wanted to see more. So thank you for that. All right. That's it. I'm out. Peace.